Yo, what's up, guys? Happy Friday. Hopefully, it's a happy morning for you guys or night. I know we have uh, some of you uh, connecting on um, or in um, or from other uh, other countries, uh, Australia being one. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, hop in here today and get set up, get ready to uh, do our live Friday jam session. This is where I am going to uh, answer any questions that you guys have. I do like to start it with a topic in mind, um, ask questions on that, and then we can go into any other direction that you want. Um, so um, that's what we're going to be doing here today. So while I let you guys come in, get situated, get yourself, well, maybe get yourself your own cup of coffee because we all like to drink coffee or tea or maybe a Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's a smoothie this morning. I don't know. But the old Bulletproof is tasting mighty good. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing here today. Again, if you guys have any questions, if you guys are tuning in for the very first time, I want to welcome you and I want to say thank you for taking some time out of your day uh, and, uh, and joining us here on this Friday edition, this Friday jam session of our coffee talks. Um, and that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. So before we do kick it off, I'm going to give it another minute or so. So this way here, we can make sure that we get everybody on. I want to make sure that my, uh, that my YouTube people <laughs> are able to join. Um, so I'm kind of waiting to see if we get any comments in there from the old YouTubes. Um, so if you are watching this on YouTube, drop a comment in there and let me know that we are officially live here, and then we will kick this thing off. Uh, also, do me a favor. Let me know, what is one win that you've had this week? What is one win that you've had this week? Um, and that would be helpful for me because then I can see exactly how you guys are doing. And I think we all need to celebrate those wins. And they can be, they can be small wins. They can be something as small as, you know, I, uh, I picked my domain name or I finally got that blog post up and live. So let me know what is one win that you've had this week. All right. Um, now I had, I'm going to kind of chime in here a little bit. I'll let you guys know on uh, a win that, uh, that I feel like I had this week. And that was, uh, and you guys heard me talk about this. Uh, I was able to get an interview scheduled with uh, Dave Turin from, well, he's known for the show Gold Rush, but now he has his own show called uh, Dave Turin's Lost Mine. And uh, that was a highlight for me this week. Uh, it was it was awesome because it was something that I was like, really, do you think we can really get someone like Dave on the podcast? And it was actually, it was actually not as hard as I would have thought. Um, and, uh, and he was just a, such a great guy. And he made me, he made me realize that even though someone might be on TV or someone might be at this certain place in their life, it's just a regular person. Like the guy's a cool guy. Um, now with that being said, let me also back up a little bit. I've had some guests, I've had some potential guests and sometimes they just think they're a little bit, you know, a little bit better. And, uh, you know, and, and maybe they're going to have to stick to a very strict schedule. They're, they're not as loose. Um, and so it's funny, I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but mainly people that aren't scheduling or getting on the show for whatever reason, you know, and I know some people, they, they think about, well, you know what I was, you know, I was doing the smaller gigs before I started selling out Madison square garden. And I think we all need to do that. We all need to remember that we're starting somewhere, right? And there's going to be someone that's further ahead. But if that first, if that person's that far ahead, that's fine. But in the same breath, can they give you a little bit of time? Can they give you a little bit of time out of their day? Can they respond to you? I don't think they're that much of a celebrity where they can't give you, you know, just a little bit of a head nod, you know? It, I don't know. It's just something that's been kind of going in my head um, this week. I was just kind of like, really? Like, okay. I, I see you. I, I see what you're doing, you know? So, um, but it also makes me recognize really, really good um, down to earth people. And Dave Turn is one of those guys. So let's see here. Uh, Salama in the house. What's up? Karen's in the house. Of course, Ka uh, Karen and I had a nice uh, little, uh, 
little call yesterday, one of our hot seats for Brand Creators Academy, and that's going to be airing in probably about a week and a half, two weeks. Really good session. And uh, Karen, let me ask you something. What was one big takeaway from our call yesterday? Let me know that in the in the comments. I'm curious. Uh, Justin, morning, Brand rock stars or Rocksters, Rocksters. Sorry. You know what I've been liking? And actually, Octavio had mentioned or had said this. I believe it was him. I might be wrong. Uh, brand rockers. I love that. Uh, what's up? Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. Justin, one win published four articles. That's a big win. That's four wins. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Lloyd, good morning, Scott from rainy and miserable England. Really rainy day there, huh? Uh, let's see. Uh, got here late. Sorry, Scott. No problem. Need Mo fishing. <laughs> love the name by the way. Need Mo fishing. Uh, I love it. Uh, James, what's up? Good morning, my friend. Oh, you, you changed up your thumbnail there. I seen got a couple of guitars here. What kind of guitars are they? James, uh, very miserable in London. Uh, Mark says, and Kay, good morning. Happy Friday from Atlanta. Awesome. All right. So here's what we're going to do guys. Uh, again, this is our, this is our jam session. This means that we just plug in and we just jam. So what I would like to do though, is I'd like to keep this centered in the beginning. At least I'm going to kick this off in like a, a traditional Friday jam session. So we can go ahead and cut where we're having this little bit of small talk. We'll cut that out and then we'll publish it on the podcast later. But what I'd like you guys to do is start um, with the topic in mind because we've had a lot of conversations around this. Actually, my coaching calls yesterday and my hot seats and the podcast episode really kept going back to doing these, these digital launches, but also physical product launches. And what does that look like? And so a lot of really good questions, but also I think sometimes you can overcomplicate it. So what I'd like to do is ask you guys, what are some questions that you would have for me about doing some type of product launch? It can be digital products. It could be physical products. So if you want to go ahead and get this jam session started, drop that question in the comments. And then what I will do while I'm waiting for you to, to put in these questions, I will go ahead and just kick it off. All right. And then that way there we can, uh, we can start this thing officially. Hey, Grace, what's up? Happy Friday from California. Awesome. All right, cool. So let's do this. Let's kick it off officially. Let me take a, let me take a sip of coffee here. Get myself ready here. Uh, okay. And Salama email and other content so we can sequence for launch. Cool. Okay, cool. All right. So that's what we're going to do. All right, here we go. Uh, Derek digital products. Okay, cool. Here we go, guys. You ready? This is how we do it. All right. And then we're going to cut this and we're going to, we're going to keep this next part for the podcast. All right. All right. All right, guys, welcome back to another Friday jam session. That's what we're going to be doing here today. And this is one of the highlights of my week because I get to hang out with some people here that are live that are going to be jamming with me live. But also for anyone that is listening to this later, I want to imagine that we are in a room together with a cup of coffee or tea or beverage of choice. Doesn't matter. I'm having coffee. And if you guys are watching this, you guys can see that I have my bulletproof here. But what I want to do today is I want to do what we do every single Friday. And we open up, we open up the questions. And we're going to start with the topic in mind because this topic I've been talking about here recently and actually yesterday I was on like four uh, coaching calls and uh, each one of those we pretty much talked about this right here and that is product launches. What does it look like for a product launch or Scott, I want to launch a digital product. What does that look like? I want to launch a digital course. How do I do that? Should I do that? Uh, so those are some questions that I want to answer, and I'm going to start that. We're also then going to open up the floor for you guys that are watching here live. And then if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can listen. And if you want to attend one of these live Friday jam sessions, and all you need to do is head over to takeactioncrew.com. Again, that's takeactioncrew.com. That'll take you to the Facebook page, and that is where we'll be streaming live and also on YouTube. All right. So. With that all being said, let's dig in. One of the one of the things I I think that people want to do is they and again, who doesn't, right? We want to try to monetize as quickly as possible. So you guys have been hearing me talk a lot about creating content, 
It's evergreen, creating uh, digital uh, assets like something like a lead magnet or a digital asset that will lead people back to the blog content or your website, which would be Pinterest, right? So those are the things. So we have we have content creation that's going to bring in traffic eventually, takes time, right? We have one post right now that took almost seven months before it started to show its face and now it's starting to really do well, all right? So that's number one, right? Content creation takes time. The Pinterest side of things, we can start to, to get attention there quicker, but then we're going to get the attention, drive it over to our website, and then we want to build our list. But now with those assets, okay, what a lot of us don't understand is that a product launch, okay, if you have, let's talk about a digital product now. If we have a digital product, now if you don't have a digital product, a very simple way, and I actually gave this advice yesterday to, I believe it was John, I gave it to Octavio. Uh, I gave it to Karen, um, trying to think who else, maybe it was just those three. No, actually, uh, there was, um, uh, Tolan was the other one, right? So every single person I gave this exact formula and it looks like this. What is the one thing that your market wants and needs right now? Okay. What does it want and need? We can turn that into a digital funnel in a sense that could lead to money a lot quicker. Okay. So again, starting this conversation off with like doing a product launch, you first need a product, right? So if you don't have a product, your first thing is like, how do I get the product? How do I test different products? Well, if you're doing physical products, it's going to be a little bit harder, right? Because we have to actually get the product, get it in hand. And then we have to let people know about it. And then from there, we got to try to get attention to it, right? We're going to use paid traffic, whether that's on Amazon, pay-per-click traffic, whether it's our email list, whether it's Google ads, uh, any of that stuff, right? We got to be able to get eyeballs on it, right? So that's a little bit harder. But if you do have a physical product, don't worry. This is going to help you today as well, all right? But let's go back. Okay, so the people that are right now currently creating content, what you could do is number one, let's pretend you don't have an email list right now. Okay. Let's just pretend that the first thing that I would do is I would say, okay, what are the, what are the six things, 10 things, whatever that someone needs to know to get a result or to help them in whatever they're trying to do. Now this could be templates. This could be downloads. This could be uh, you know, a cheat sheet, it could be any of that stuff. But what you want to do is you want to map out what is that? Okay. What does that look like? Now, once you do that, you're going to then create blog posts or written content or videos that are going to address that one part in that topic or in that six part thing, right? So what we're doing is we're really building a product but we're also creating content. So we are publishing, stay with me here, all right? We are basically publishing, let's say part one, all right, on a blog post. Then a week later, we do part two. And then the next week we do part three. And at the end of it, it might be six parts. It might be 10 parts. Well, guess what? Now we can take those blog posts and we can bundle them up and make a nice little pretty ebook. Now we've got a product. All right. Now you might say, well, Scott, how do I sell that? I'm putting it on my website for free. You are, but also people want it so they can download it. They also want it in a, in a better form, maybe, right? They want it in a PDF or maybe they want, uh, because inside of that also, my recommendation would be to then take that blog post. Just don't copy and paste it in there. You want to add some new things to it not a whole bunch, but you want to add some screenshots. You want to add some images. You want to add some additional resources, not hard to do. The framework is there, but now you have this digital asset. Okay. So now once we have this digital asset, we can say, how do I launch this digital asset? Right? How do I launch this thing for 10 bucks for 20 bucks? Right? How do I do it? The next part of this equation, let's say we don't have an email list yet. We need to find out what is one thing that will give them a result or give them a quick win. All right. Let me use an example here. Cause I think James is on still. Um, so James, okay. He has a, uh, or he is going to teach guitar, right? Teach guitar lessons. Okay. So for James, the way it would be like, it'd be like, okay, let me figure out what is 
what is a song that people want to learn in the style that I want to be able to teach, right? So let's say it's in heavy metal guitar, right? And, and, uh, I am going, or even just hard rock. Let's say it's an ACDC song. Cause I know James had mentioned ACDC. So let's just say ACDC. We know that people, uh, they want to learn how to play, uh, back in black. Right. And so you would then create that as your lead magnet, right? That would be, Hey, here is the rhythm lick to back in black. Learn it in 10 minutes or less, right? Boom. I want to know that. Okay. So now once I put that out there, I can put it out on my Facebook page. I can let, you know, just uh, social media know about it. Or if I build an email list, this is where it comes in. I'm going to be able to let them know about it, or I can start building my email list with that lead magnet. Now, once I do, guess what? I might have done seven, eight, maybe 10 different lessons on maybe doing the whole album, or maybe it is a mix bag of like different artists, right? And so now what I could do is I could do that behind the scenes as I was telling you, right? Like maybe 10 different songs. I bundle that up and now that's worth $9.99. Who wouldn't spend $9.99 on a full book showing me how to play all of those songs with tablature and maybe there's going to be a video that's going to accompany it, right? Yes, it resides on your blog, but you're also now going to bundle that. So now we have a lead magnet, leads people in. And then from there on the thank you page, we would then say, Hey, we just sent you your, uh, you know, your quick lick to, uh, be able to play back in black, but before you go get our full collection of hard rock classics for just $9 and 99 cents, 50% off for the next 30 minutes. Right? So that thank you page is a way for us to then sell something. Okay. So the quickest way to launch a product would be that way. If it's a digital product. Again, we got to have the digital product. We got to, we got to know what people want by the way. Right. So we can do that by just, again, fielding questions, doing our research, right. And then building out that content. Okay. So again, that's a perfect example, right? Now, the other thing is, let's say that I wanted to, uh, do a different song because another song was pretty popular too. Then I could create that as a secondary lead magnet, right? And I'm not a big fan of getting multiple, multiple, uh, you know, different lead magnets, magnets out there because it does complicate things, but in your market, it might be good to go out and have three different songs that all lead back to that same thank you page. Right. And then from there you can sell a $9 and 99 cent book right now. That doesn't sound like a lot, but you sell 10 a day. That's a hundred, that's hundred bucks. Right. And it's a digital product. You don't have to worry about inventory or none of that stuff. Take it a step further. Now we can also maybe over the, over the next six months, you're going to build out maybe three of these eBooks, right? Now, when you get those done, now we can add that also to what we call an order bump, right? So now what that does is it gives people first things free. Second thing is a one-time offer for 50% off to get the collection edition. And then the order bump would be $25 gets all four, something like that, or four more, something like that, right? That's what we call a digital funnel. Okay. It's not a major course. It's not a whole video series that you got to hurry up and create and all of that stuff. Right. And it's a great way to test it. So in order to launch that, you would then, you would drive Facebook ads to that, right? You would just drive Facebook ads to that, right? You would find, uh, you know, uh, guitar magazine, people that follow that. Uh, if you already have an email list, you can upload that. So the way to launch that would be just drive traffic to it. It'd be paid traffic. But if you have your own website traffic, that's where it gets really fun because now what we can do is we can just put a header banner on our website and say, this week we're launching our, our, uh, you know, our free, uh, guitar lesson pack. And then on the back end of that, there would be some ways to make money. So that's how I would launch a digital product this way here. You're not trying to construct this whole entire major course. You're just building out content on your website. And then when you get it completed, you're turning that into a digital product. All right. So now let's talk about once you build that email list, now we can talk about launching other products. Okay. Cause once we build the email list that we know that they got in because we, they wanted the guitar training in hard rock, by the way. Now I wouldn't say give them a classical piece and then try to upsell them or sell them, you know, a hard rock piece, not going to be aligned. Right. 
So you got to know what that next thing is. It's more usually of what they already got. And that one quick win is just going to kind of kind of give them that thing and go, oh, I like James. He really knows how to teach me. I'm going to go ahead and get more from him, right? Now, if they don't purchase, that's where the email sequence comes in because then we can follow up with them. But the cool thing is this will also allow you to really move fast when you want to create new products because now you can, and I, I mentioned this to Karen yesterday, you want to reach out to your email list and say, what is uh, what is one song that you want to learn that you've been trying to learn that you just are having a tough time with, right? Or what is a what is something that you're struggling with playing guitar? Maybe it's that simple. Uh, it's maybe it's scales. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's cross picking. Maybe it's finger picking, right? And once you start to get these answers, you're going to come out with some content that's going to answer that problem. It's also going to turn into a product right? So that's how we launch. We don't necessarily go, oh, I think this is going to be a great product. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm going to make one of those products and sell it, right? You're not guessing as much here, right? We're, we're doing what we know the market most likely wants because we've got data. And then from there, we're going to build it. Now, a physical product again is going to be a little bit harder, but if you're, if you have a physical product, number one, you want to build an email list. You, you, you want to build an email list because with that email list, you can then do what I've talked about is you want to build the runway when you're building the runway, maybe four weeks out, maybe two weeks out, whatever, whatever you want to do, I would say at least two weeks out. And then you just want to start dropping hints that you're going to be doing something and then also following up with, you know, good content, but also dropping in there. Right? So for you guys right now, you're listening or you're watching this. And you're going to hear me say right now, which if you've been on any of these coffee talks in the past couple of weeks, you've heard me say we've officially announced that we're opening Brand Creators Academy on July 6th. So you see what I just did there? I set I set the seed, right? I set it there. So this way here, you're like, you know what? Scott, let me know. And then tomorrow, guess what? I'll mention it again. And the next day I'll mention it again, but I'm just dropping it in there. You might be marking your calendar right now because you've tried to get in before because we only open four times a year, right? So July 6th. So now I'm talking about this right now, helping you with like a product launch. Well, inside of Brand Creators Academy, that's also what we're helping our members with, which we actually have plans to do a full out, like build a digital funnel and then record it all. Um, so that's also something that we're working on, which I'm pretty excited about. So I would say if you are at all like thinking to yourself, man, it just seems like it's going to take me so long to build out content. In the meantime, you could be building out your content, but building a digital asset that you could sell right alongside it, right alongside it. You just need to plan that. And then you need to come out with part one, part two, part three, part four, or maybe just, you don't even have to call them part this, part that. It's just, this is the first step. That's the second step. That's the third step. And then you just build that out. A great way to see what that would look like is you would just want to go and find a Kindle book that's selling right now in your market and then look at the chapters. Those are the sequences of events that have to happen to help someone with this. All right. So that's, that's it in a nutshell, guys. So hopefully that helped you guys. Now let's open it up for your questions. All right. And I'm going to scroll through here just a little bit. Uh, okay, cool. Here we go. We have, okay. Salama says, email and other content sequence for a launch. Okay, so the sequence looks like this. Okay, it's very simple. You want to make it known through an email that you have something coming, right? And a simple way of doing this is just like, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've been working on, well, first off, let me time up, back out, you know, back out of that for a second. What you want to do is you want to first lead with asking them a question of what they want to learn more about or know more about, or what do they need help with? That becomes the product, by the way. So if you're just going to throw something out there because you're excited about creating something, that's fine, but you better make sure that you've already validated that those people want it. So that's first step. Second step is, hey, after I asked the, the question of, uh, you know, what was the one thing that you're struggling with playing guitar, uh, a lot of you said that it was, uh, it was doing scales. And I'll tell you what, you know, um, that's maybe a certain guitarist, maybe, uh, you know, uh, Joe Satriani is just a great scale, uh, scale guy. And what I've decided to do is put together some free training for you that shows you some of these scales. And it's actually, I break it down so it's super simple to do. Um, so, you know, that's how you would do that, right? Then you would lead them to that. But then also you might be coming out with the ultimate scale guide, 
right? And that's going to be the product. But you need to know what the product is before you actually start to kind of place the seeds. But then every email isn't going to be like, oh, by the way, seven days before I launch my course, then the next one, hey, uh, five days before I launch my course. No, it's always helping them with something around that thing, right? So when I was doing the Pinterest traffic workshop and I was talking about that, that whole week I was helping with understanding all about Pinterest traffic, right? And then it just naturally led up to the Pinterest traffic workshop. So again, I've said this before, if you guys want like to see it in real time, you just hang out here, hang out on the jam sessions, but hang out on the coffee talks uh, and just watch because this is exactly what I'm doing right now right? This, uh, this here, you guys can't see it if you're watching this, but the brand creators playbook, right? This book was created by me coming up with the topic and really what does it take to fully build out a brand right now? There's like six sections in here. I can talk about each one of these and always relate it back to the playbook, right? And then the front end of that is the brand growth validation checklist, our little cheat sheet, right? And if you download that, you're going to be able to find and really validate your market within 10 minutes, right? What does that do? Quick win. What does it also get you to do? Once you identify your market, you're like, all right, Scott, show me how to build a brand playbook. You get in the playbook. You're like, this is awesome, but I got more questions. I want to be able to have support monthly. Maybe I'll jump into brand creators Academy. You see how that all tied together, right? So just try to study what I'm doing, right? And just try to learn from it. Like, that's it. Like you can see it in real time. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, dude, I email you. Okay. So here we go. Uh, James first question of the day on YouTube tags. How many should I use? Okay. So now we're going to get a little bit off of product launches, which is totally fine. Um, and if you guys do have any questions on the product launch thing, add them in. Um, but I will answer this for sure. First question of the day on YouTube tags. How many should I use? I've been doing eight keyword phrases, um, uh, as not to stuff. Is that okay? Or should I add more? Uh, I would say as many as, uh, as fits right? As meaning don't try to stuff them just to stuff them. If you're doing how to learn back in black ACDC, that would be a tag. Um, ACDC back in black, that would be a tag. ACDC back in black rhythm, that'd be a tag. You always want to include the main keys, uh, key C word, keyword in there. If I can talk here. All right. I'm interested in create, and this is Derek, by the way, I'm interested in creation and content for paid membership site and related products and content. The one thing I would say with doing a paid membership right out of the gate is you need to first off know exactly what people want and they would be willing to pay on a regular basis. So it generally would not start with a paid membership. It would start with exactly what I just outlined for you. Okay. It would be figure out what is the solution or the problem that you're going to help people solve. And then from there, create something on the front end that is free that will give them a quick win that will also lead them to want to maybe, you know, do the ebook or do the mini video training for, for 20 bucks or whatever, right? Then you can kind of get yourself rolling. I would never say just start with a membership site, me personally. Now, there's some people that would. I, I wouldn't because it's a whole nother animal. You got to basically manage that and you also need to uh, have support all the time. Uh, and I mean, supporting the members, you want to make sure that they're getting results. You want to make sure that they're getting what is, uh, you know, what is expected of, uh, you know, of what you've promised. Right. So I wouldn't necessarily say go with the membership right out of the gate. I would start with the little mini baby, little digital funnel, and that's going to be a lead magnet. Anyway, that could lead in, see how this here, this all can lead into brand creators Academy, but it doesn't mean it has to start there right? It can start with the front end stuff. And then you're just building an email list and a paid customer list of people that might be interested in the, in the membership. Uh, Derek, should I drip content rather than create a whole course for membership site? I would always say less is more. People think that you want to build this big, robust training. And sometimes it's actually overwhelming and then people won't stay. They're like, I got to just slow down here. Right? So a lot of times it's small bite-sized pieces is going to be a better uh, you know, a better thing there for you. Um, Karen, the biggest takeaway. Okay. So this was from our, our call that we did, uh, yesterday. The biggest takeaway, uh, is I'm going to, or I'm going in the right direction for a moment. I got to see what this could be. We talked about monetizing in ways I did not think about and what I need to do to get there. Thank you for all your help, Scott. It's truly appreciated. Yeah, Karen. And you're, 
you're set up perfectly for this whole front end offer, you know, free offer to a thank you page that has a, uh, you know, a, a nice small little offer that helps them further. And then a little bit of a bump. And we talked about that. So I think that is your focus. Um, and everything else that you're doing is spot on. So keep it going. Uh, let's see, Salomon, would you create a lead magnet that shifts a belief or is that too soft or of a skill and not as valued in the market? Um, okay. Well, yes, I don't. Okay. I think what you're saying is, is should you put out uh, content that gets people to, to understand your beliefs and then kind of like, uh, adopt them. Right. And I think that is good because what it does is it repels people and it attracts people, right? So we don't want everyone, right? So if I was to put out content about getting a Lamborghini and, uh, you know, having some, uh, you know, girls hanging all over me and stuff like that's a, that's a different, you know, that's a different person. Like I'm not, I don't want to attract that person. I want to repel that person. Right. So I'm like always talking about family and, and things that are important to me. Right. But then also I'm talking about you know, there's a hundred different ways that you can build a business online. This is to me by far the best in my opinion, because it's low risk. You can validate way ahead of time and you can do a lot of different things from the traffic. And what I just outlined here today, you can also get to money quicker. If you have the opportunity to build out a small little digital mini funnel, if you will, which doesn't have to be complicated. Okay. So, um, I would say, yes, you want one that doesn't necessarily, you, yes, I, I guess shift their beliefs, but makes them realize, wow, okay, that, that makes sense. Like for me to tell you, does it make sense for you to go find a product on Amazon that's selling well, and you look at all the numbers and you do all of the research that you can to say, yes, I think if I launch that product and I make it a little bit better, I will do better than that other person. But I don't know what they're doing to drive sales. I don't know any of that stuff, but I think that I could do it. Right. And that's all that you thought about. You, you source the product, you get it here. It takes you three months. You, you get it here and you launch it. And then you start driving pay-per-click to it and you start to get some sales, but then all of a sudden competition comes in and all that stuff. Right now, what you're sitting with this one product right? That you are thinking to yourself, how the heck am I going to sell this thing? Cause all I have is a product. I don't have a brand. Right. And now I come in and I go, that's one way of doing it, but I would, I would challenge you to do it a different way. I would say, number one, figure out if your market has traffic, not on Amazon. Number one. Okay. Number two, can you sub niche down and still get traffic so we can go and get, uh, you know, get eyeballs without having a lot of competition at first. And then the next thing is, is there content being created? Is there email list captures happening, right? And then are there multiple ways to monetize that without selling just a product on Amazon, right? Now, if I was to do all of that stuff, don't, wouldn't you agree that I'm going to have more chances to monetize than that one product that if it doesn't work, does that make sense, right? Do you agree with that? Now I'm asking you that, and maybe you can drop it in the comments, but do you see what I just did there? Now, some people are like, I don't care. I've seen this guy over here and he's got, you know, uh, he, all he does is launch random products and he's doing great. Maybe on the surface, we don't know what he's doing behind the scenes, right? Maybe, maybe not, but you would probably agree that I've got a better chance of having long, uh, sustainable, uh, traffic and potential to sell additional products. Like Right now, instead of me thinking about the next product that I got to source that's, that's going to cost me three to five grand, I can just think about what's the digital product that I could create that I could serve my market. But then if you only started with the product, you might find out that that product can't be, uh, you know, uh, built a brand around. Maybe it's water filters for a uh, frigid air or something, right? Like, I don't know, like maybe it's something as random as that, but the numbers look good, right? So I'm going to sell that, that water filter, right? So I think you would agree that it's probably a better idea to do the other. It makes more sense. So you see what I just did there? I didn't convince you. I just stated my opinions, but also it makes logical sense, right? And then you're like, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. And then you're going to tune back in, right? Or you might be like, no, I just want to find that product and sell it. I don't want to build a brand. Then you're over there, right? That's how it works. All right, let's see here. What else we got? Uh, Okay. Uh, hey, Winston, good morning. Uh, okay, Derek, how deep will you make your uh, selling additional products? A uh, bundle, I think you meant there. 
says fundle, but I think it's bundle, uh, selling additional products. How deep will you make your bundle? Uh, so I'm not quite sure what I'm, what you mean by how deep you would make your bundle. Um, but I think what you mean is how big would I make it? And it doesn't have to be that big. It just needs to, it just needs to work. It needs to address their, their, uh, their issues and then, uh, come up with that solution. Um, why did you choose a short launch for Pinterest is launch run, uh, runway dependent on the amount of the offer? I like that question and it's a great question. Okay. So what, uh, what Salama is asking here is, uh, we recently did a Pinterest traffic workshop. Okay. And that was something just out of the blue. I said, you know what? We're teaching it inside of brand creators Academy. We're going to go ahead and do a pop-up workshop outside of the Academy. We'll update all of the training, make it new. And from there, we will also do two live calls. Now, this was a, uh, not that expensive of a, of a, uh, training, uh, at the time of me doing this right now, it was $149, right? So not that much for a full course, right? And I've charged, uh, anywhere from a thousand dollars to $2,000 for online courses and done, I, you know, I've done well with those, right? But I've switched it over to now where I want to do the membership after, you know, doing that for many years, it's just, I can focus all my energy there now. That's another topic, but. To your point, uh, we did that because we wanted to, number one, help people with that one area, okay? Plus, we also wanted to get people to raise their hand that are interested in building a brand, in this case, Pinterest traffic, but then also they might be interested in joining Brand Creators Academy. So it's a shorter, smaller window, okay, as far as like, it's not that big of a focus for us. We just kind of threw it out there. We didn't have to heavily promote it, you know? And then when we open for Brand Creators Academy, that will become bigger because we have a very short window of time. We only open up for five days every four months, okay? So there's a, you know, and we don't, we don't go outside of that. So the reason why we then want to really build that out a little bit further is because we only have that limited amount of time. Now I can do a pop-up workshop on that Pinterest again, I don't know, in, in another month, I can do it if I want to, um, or I can do another one. Maybe I will do an email list building workshop. We'll do a pop-up and we'll do a mini little, a little launch on that. And then again, but we're always focusing on brand creators, Academy members, right? So yes, there is a difference. If you have a bigger launch, it's going to take more, uh, more energy. It's going to maybe take a longer runway. If you're using Facebook ads, because we're going to build custom audiences, there's a lot of that stuff that goes behind it. But if you've never done a launch, I wouldn't go that direction. I would do the little mini digital funnel like I just outlined for you guys. Uh, let's see. At what point after creating content do you start selling to them? Well, I guess the, the thing I would ask is let's, let's first figure out what that, what that product would consist of. And I would start with an ebook. I think it's the easiest thing to do. And I think it's, um, it's easy to deliver. And I think people are, they're used to paying anywhere from nine to, uh, you know, $20, uh, to, to buy an ebook, a good ebook. Um, so I think that personally, that's where I would go. So I would just start mapping out my content and I would publish that content on my website. So it serves as two different purposes, right? We're going to get traffic. And we're going to be able to then, you know, sell that as a digital product. Um, so that's what I would do there. Uh, let's see. Wow. A lot of questions. Cool. Uh, okay. Is the conversion rate typically low? If you launch your product to an email list from a giveaway, even with nurturing the list beforehand. Uh, so I think Kay, what you're talking about is a physical product. And the answer is yes. Uh, it, it typically is, um, going to be less. And here's why. When we're building our giveaway list, we're not necessarily building it just to sell a product. That is a side benefit, but um, it's not necessarily the only reason why we're building that. We're building it so we can get attention to our content. We're doing it so we can get feedback, so we can ask questions, so we can build a course that people want. So there's all of those things. But yes, your conversion rate will typically be lower. But you can, if you do it right, is you can do an email sequence that will definitely, um, most likely generate sales if you do it properly. And if you've targeted right on the front end with your giveaway with the right people. Okay. So, um, we would, we would say if you are doing a, um, 
some type of launch on a product, let's say that it's just a special that you're running, right? Or maybe it's a new brand new product, right? And you, and you have, uh, maybe you have a hundred of them that you're going to discount, right? So what we've done there is we've said, Hey, we got a hundred of these that we're going to discount. They're new to the market. We want to get, um, you know, we want to get a hundred people to be able to, to get these in their hand. So what we're going to do is for the next three days, we're going to offer 30% off, but we only have a hundred available at this price, right? Cause that's what you're allowing, right? It's not fake scarcity. It's scarcity and it's real because that's what you're going to do. You're going to limit the amount. And then you would just let them know before it goes live. So maybe one or two emails, letting them know that you're going to be doing this and how awesome the product is and why you created the product and what it helps with. Right. And then you would then say, so be ready on Monday. We're going to, uh, we're going to open this up and the first hundred, uh, we'll get this discount. And then you're going to email on Monday with, you know, basically letting them know that it's, it's up and it's ready. And then Tuesday, you're going to email, Hey, just reminding you, you know, letting you know, just in case you missed it, but we, you know, started opening, uh, you know, sales for our new thing. Right. And then you just remind them about that. It ends tomorrow at midnight. And then the last day you're going to send another email that says deadline, right? Um, last chance to get these at 30% off. And then you probably want to send a fourth email. And I know that's scary for some people, but, um, I would say in that promotion in a short, tight window, it's like four emails. Um, actually five, if you count the one that's, that's kind of like getting it prepped, right? So a lot of people don't do that. They don't do that whole sequence and that's why they don't sell their product. You got to be able to sell, but you also can't just have the giveaway and go promotion. That won't work. Um, that would actually not work. Um, how long should you nurture your list before selling to them? Would you sell in a thank you email? Yes, I would, I would sell not in the thank you email necessarily. Well, okay. Let me back up. Here's what I would do. Um, I would have that free offer. Okay. The free, uh, lead magnet. And I would even send that to your email list, even though they're on your list, because then what will happen is they will enter their email address again, just to get the thing. They're not going to be added twice to your list. If you're using convert kit. And then from there, you would then send them to a thank you page on that. Thank you page. There would be an offer. Okay. For 50% off of something. Right. And then if they do not purchase that, then what you can do is you can follow up in a separate sequence that basically reminds them of the offer, but also gives them uh, details about the thing that they downloaded. Right. So for me, it would be like uh, you would uh, download the brand growth validation checklist. And then I would follow up with you if you if you didn't purchase the playbook and I would then mention the playbook, but then I would also say, make sure that you go through step one in the validation process. It's the most critical part because if you do not figure out your niche or your specific sub niche, um, you're not going to be able to validate properly. So make sure you do that. And oh, by the way, if you want the entire process for building your brand, go grab the playbook. You see what we did there? We touch on the, uh, on the, the lead magnet, help them with that, making sure that they downloaded it. Cause a lot of people get it and they're like, oh gosh, I didn't even, I didn't even download it. Right. So you want that. And then on the other side of it is that's where you would, you would sell on the back end. Uh, James question two, I'm on a site. Uh, I do not own. I asked one question and got 220 answers in 24 hours from various people. I'm currently making videos for these questions. I'm allowed to promote my site, YouTube channel, very uh, respectfully. Of course, no spam. How can I draw people to me? So they'll come to my page, get them on your email list lead magnet. That's all that you need to know. So what is something that you can put together that you'll give them for free in exchange for their email address? I would be capitalizing on that right now. Okay. Don't worry about even selling anything right now. If you had something in place, this would be a beautiful uh, situation for that. But if you don't just get the email, right? So what is something that you could create? Is it, is it a, uh, a 30 minute lesson, uh, free lesson that they're going to learn something, give it to them right? Like give them that. Okay. Um, that's what I would do. Collect those emails. Uh, Nemo fishing, uh, setting up a survey monkey account is free and your audience can vote on specific ideas, um, that they are most need of. Yes. The other way to do it is you can just have links inside of your convert kit account and say, Hey, click what, uh, what topic, uh, you'd like to learn more about. And then once they click it, you're going to see the different clicks and how many, uh, clicks each link gets. That's another quick down and dirty way to do it. Geo, what's up? If you put timestamps in your video, Google will index those. Yes. 
Uh, how do I set up my bonus call with you? Oh, Salama. Um, yeah, you just need, no, there's no deadline for that. Um, yeah, just email me Scott at brandcreators.com. Uh, Salama was one of our 10, our first 10. We had a fast action taker, which is another thing that you guys should always do is have something for the first 10 or five that actually, uh, either purchase something or sign up and then reward them with something. In this case, I offered a 20 minute coaching call. So Salama is going to get, going to get one of those. So yeah, that's what you do. Salama. Uh, I totally believe in building a brand. It would be too risky to have one product business. Yeah. And I've seen it happen. I've seen people have a one product business and then they get a claim against them and they can't sell it anymore. I had one guy, actually he's in brand creators Academy and, uh, he had a product. He was stuck with $60,000 because of a patent infringement. That's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty tough one to swallow right there. Uh, is it important to get their email before they get our content, like gate content before they read further only if give, give email, not all the time. No, just a specific lead magnet. That would, that would be it. I, I can't stand when I go on an article and then it says to read more, enter your name and email address. I can't stand that. Um, so no, I don't like that. I like the lead magnet. I like the lead magnet. Uh, Lena, what's up? One win. Oh, okay. A win here. Uh, I got impressions 1.53. So 1,500 total audience, 166 engagements, 18 engaged audience, five with less than two weeks, Pinterest training starting from absolutely zero. Well, that's great news and that's beautiful. So thank you for sharing that. And that's only going to go up. You're going to be doing great. Uh, let's see here. Derek says funnel. Okay. That's what you meant. Funnel. I got it now. Okay. Uh, Okay, how many upsells will you have on initial product? That's a tricky one. I don't like a whole bunch of upsells. I like to keep it clean and simple. So again, I'm going to I'm going to do that for you, all right? The very most basic basic digital funnel that you're going to have is going to be one, an email opt-in that will uh that will have people um download a uh a cheat sheet. Uh, maybe it is, uh, the tablature for the guitar song that they want to play or the guitar notes for the, the, the song that they want to play, whatever it is, right? That's it. The second part is the thank you page, the thank you page. And I, I actually, I went through this with Karen yesterday and Karen, I'm not calling you out, but I'm going to use you as an example. Um, her thank you page was just basically you're now subscribed. Like that was it. Right. And it was just the, the, the typical convert kit standard form. That's premium real estate. We want to do something there. If it's not an offer, give them something else to do. Okay. If you're doing a giveaway, it's like, Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for signing up to, or joining the contest or submitting the, you know, in the contest. Now what I'd like you to do is share this and get more entries, right? You always want something else to do there. And in this case, we're talking about then possibly selling something on that. Thank you page. It's a great opportunity. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, I love how simple your business model is and how easy you make it all seem. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's simple. It's not easy, right? There are things that need to happen, but it's one step at a time, one chunk at a time. Do not try to do it all. Uh, Lydia, approximately what kind of time frame are we looking to get to six figures in this content, creating brand creating? What does that look like? Now that's a really that's a really hard question to answer because I think every brand is going to be different. If all you're doing is publishing content and going to just run, uh, you know, Ezoic ads or Mediavine, it's going to take a while. Um, if you have the opportunity to create something like a digital, a little mini digital product that can happen a lot quicker, a lot quicker. So I would encourage anyone to try to look at their niche and see what they could turn into some type of digital asset or even a training of some kind. Um, again, that would be down the, the line. The simplest way is like I just outlined. That would be your quickest way, by the way, because if we can then, while we're building out our content, we can then, yes, talk about our stuff. We can put up our lead capture form and all of that stuff. And over time, we're going to build our own traffic. But in the meantime, we can start to run Facebook ads um, and then start driving it to our lead magnet. Right. And then once we build the email list, we can do little promotions. And so when we have the email list, it allows us to do promotions on our products or other people's products. So you do, it does speed up that process. So content creation is just one part of the brand building process, by the way. It's not just that's it. Right. Now, if some people, that's all you can do and you just want to build the traffic over time, then do that. Right. But to monetize it, you have to have 
products in there, affiliate products, your own products or digital products, physical products, and then uh, you can leverage uh, ad networks. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, okay, how far would you plan your launch out if you had zero people on your list? Well, it depends. If you're not going to necessarily launch the product to an email list, you could you could start driving traffic there tomorrow with a Facebook ad, right? It's a whole nother animal, but it's it's possible. Right. So you don't have to have the list part of doing the lead magnet and then doing this whole process is also to build your list. So you may do this and, and run ads for, I don't know, a month or two, build up your list enough. And then you might just use that list to launch your next product. So it, that does depend. Okay. Says very helpful. Thank you, Scott. No problem. Okay. Appreciate you. Uh, would you use a quiz as your lead magnet or is that too complicated for the very first opt-in? I, I wouldn't use a quiz in the beginning to to be honest with you, I would just use what, what am I downloading here? A cheat sheet on how to do what, right? Um, download the brand growth validation checklist and, and, uh, validate and, uh, choose your market in 10 minutes or less. How does that sound? You want that, right? You get that, you go through it. You're like, wow, that's pretty good. Now my mind is like blown. I'm like, there's all these opportunities to build my brand in my market because I just validated it. Scott's a good guy. The playbook, right? Brand creators Academy, right? Brand Accelerator Live, uh, Lake Shop uh, or La Lake House Workshops, right? That all comes from that, right? But it starts with the quick win and what do they want? I talked to Karen yesterday in depth about this. You gotta add, if you have an email list, even of a hundred people, ask them what is their biggest sticking point on learning to play guitar and then just help them fix that problem. That becomes your lead magnet, okay? Okay. Um, Karen says, we talked about my weekly emails and making chapters in the digital book. Would I wait until I have 12 months worth of chapters? If I don't wait, how would that work? How would I add the other chapters on so that everyone who purchased the digital book would get it? Um, well, you can just send them an email and say, hey, the first six chapters are done. I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, releasing the next six as a bonus and you're going to get all of them too. So it could just be a bonus that you could add in. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Geo says, okay, cool. You guys are conversing. That's cool. Um, okay. Karen says, if I put a Facebook ad on my lead magnet, what is the amount of, uh, the amount of time I should run the ad? Huh? That's a, that's a, that's a hard question. Um, typically at least a couple days, uh, because you got to let it kind of work itself. But I would say, even if you just tested it with 10 bucks a day, you're going to start getting some data. Uh, Derek, how do you get people to give you their email while they are reading your post? Where do we put the lead magnet in the post? Great question. I would use something like hello bar. Hello bar will allow you to do a pop-up. So no matter what page they're on, it will be a light box. They call it. It's very, uh, it's very simple and it's not, uh, obnoxious, right? It's not like bang and it just kind of hammers you in the face and it's like spammy looking. It's just, it'll, everything will go like a uh, little bit dark and then that will just slowly kind of like make itself known. You can also have a slide in on the bottom of the page, um, that will just basically come in and say, Hey, download, um, you know, the five, uh, worms that, uh, rubber worms to catch more bass guide or something like that or cheat sheet something like that. So yeah, that's what you would do. You can always inside the post, put a link and then you, what we call a double, uh, or I'm sorry, a two-step opt-in where they would click a link and then it would pop up the box there right on the page. So that's what I would do there. Uh, let's see. Uh, do we tell them in the post to get cheat sheet within the post? Yeah, you do. If you have one, make reference to it, but naturally, right? And then also you can always just put one in line there too. Um, so if you have, if you have a lead magnet that definitely lends itself to the content that you're writing, then it makes sense to put it in there. Uh, okay. And geo, uh, you could use it as another lead magnet, share, uh, this link and get some freebie. You could, that's a, that's another option. Okay. So lots of options. All right. So, all right, guys, any last questions here before we wrap up this jam session? Um, I think we've fielded just about all of them. I can tell that these are uh, questions that you guys are definitely uh, interested in, or this topic, I should say. And uh, we are definitely um, seeing that there's more of a demand for this. Uh, and again, what am I doing, guys? What am I doing right now? Right? I'm bringing up this topic. I'm seeing how many of you need help with it and even want to do it. And then the first thing that I'm going to do, the very first thing that I'm going to do, and we've already talked about this inside the academy is I'm going to create with Chris Schaefer, 
a training that is going to teach this whole process step by step. Where is that going to be published first? Brand Creators Academy. Why? Because there are members, they always are going to get the number one treatment access, the, the soonest, the quickest, right? And then what we're going to do maybe is we'll take this and we will make it a pop-up workshop that we will do just like the Pinterest traffic workshop, right? But you'll have to wait for that. If you're in the Academy, you'll get it first and you'll also be able to answer or ask questions on a, on a uh, weekly basis and all of that stuff. Do you see what I just did there? If I threw this out here and you guys are like, I don't have any questions on that. I don't want to do that. I, I, I'm not interested in that. But I can tell you guys are interested in that. And if you guys are, I know there's other people and I already know because I brought this up in the academy, they're interested in it. So it's probably going to be a green light. Tell me, is this something that we should create a training around? I'm going to sit here and take a sip of my coffee. You guys let me know. Is this something that we should create a training around? Would this be helpful? Let me know. Yeah, Gio, no problem, man. Uh, okay, Mark says, how do we get into the academy? So Mark, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, and again, you guys here, I, I don't pitch that hardly at all. Um, and the reason is, is because just like this, Mark's asking, how do we get in the academy, right? So you're naturally going to ask that. Guys, do this exact same thing that I'm doing. Just deliver content. People will ask, right? Um, the way that you uh, that you join is you basically get in when we open enrollment. And that is going to be July 6th right now. That'll be the next time we open. After that, it'll be about three, four months, four months um, after that, that we'll reopen again. Um, so we open it for like five days and then we just, we cater everything towards the academy. We do two monthly live calls. We just did a virtual call face-to-face. -face. Um, we do hot seat sessions. I just did one with Karen yesterday. That will be airing inside of there. Us really breaking down her niche and really going through this similar uh, topic that we were talking about today. Cause she has a great opportunity there and we we're going to share that hot seat with all of our members. So you could be a hot seat member too. So that's what we do inside of our Academy, but that that's how you would, that's how you would get in, uh, Mark, to be honest with you. And if you want to get on the, on the wait list, um, the best thing to do is just go to brandcreators.com and download the checklist. If you download the checklist, you're going to number one, you're going to be able to, to go through that and validate your market. Uh, but number two, it's going to let us know that we should probably contact you when we open the Academy because you're interested in building the brand. See, that's how it works. Uh, awesome. Yes. So I got a lot of yeses. So that's cool. Awesome. All right, cool. So guys, we are going to wrap up this. Uh, we're going to wrap up this, this jam session. We jammed pretty hard today. We jammed pretty good. Um, so guys, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to come back here tomorrow. Uh, we are most likely tomorrow. Well, you know what? I'm not going to say what we're going to talk about yet. We'll make that a little bit of a surprise, but come back tomorrow, uh, hang out with us some more, uh, bring your friends. If I could ask you to do one thing for me, it's not buy my products or, you know, join the Academy. I mean, yeah, that would be great. But what I really like you to do, just invite a friend, have someone come with you next time. Maybe bring someone to the coffee talks. Um, that would be awesome. Or maybe even just make it a point that you come back to the Friday jam sessions where we answer questions and get to hang out a little bit on a Friday and just get our weekend kicked off on the right foot. All right. So that's all I ask for you or from you. Um, also, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to go back and watch any of the coffee talks that we've done in the past, which by the way, if you're stuck on something, there's probably going to be the solution inside of one of these coffee talks. And you can find that by going right here after the, this is live, by the way, this will be on YouTube should be right about here, or it's going to be in the description and we'll link up to the uh, past coffee talks, which I think today we just hit 80, which is crazy that we're that far, uh, into this, which is pretty awesome. Pretty amazing. I only missed one day. And the reason why I missed it, it was Easter Sunday, but I've been consistent every single day. So I encourage you to do the same. All right, guys. So that is it. That is going to wrap up this jam session. Once again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. And I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time right here on the Take Action Morning Show. All right, guys. Take care. Take action. Talk to you soon. Now let's rock your brand. See you guys.